Okay, so finally over halfway, we are up to Order of the Phoenix. It'll be fun to rewatch it because yeah, I haven't seen this one in ages, but it is one that I probably watched more often than the others, this and the last two, so I'll probably remember a lot of what's going on, but hey, let's get into it. Back to the Jerusalems. Yeah, we didn't see them in a Goblet of Fire at all, did we? <laughs> and they just appeared out of nowhere. Where is your mum, Potter? Is she dead? Oh, that's always crossing the line, isn't it? Is she dead? Should go. Oh yeah, I should save time in time. Like, how am I gonna drag this dude home? He's so heavy. Hello, Mrs. Fig. Mrs. Fig? Yeah, so Mrs. Fig was on and off in the books. She was she was um introduced in the first one as well as like basically an old crazy neighbour with lots of cats. And yeah, she'd always been watching over Harry from when he'd first been placed there when he was a baby. It told me you would have done but she's a she's a squib, so yeah, she's a witch without magic. You are hereby expelled from Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Because so I think later in this trial they bring up the um, time magic was used in the second when Dobby made the cake float, and they're like, "Oh, it's just this is your second warning." <laughs> oh yes, he was always angry in the third, and then in the fourth he settled down a bit, and now he's even more angry in this one. Just notice as well, since they both have blue eyes, Voldemort and Harry, I think in this one they do a lot of kind of like parallels about how Harry feels like he's very similar to Voldemort. Just that shot with the eyes opening in his. That's a bit creepy. It's nice they gave him a lock so he can lock people out of his room. Rescuing you, of course. Because he's not suspicious. Because in the book, he was more suspicious of Moody. Because it's like, well, last year you weren't really, you know, you. Oh, here's this music. What's it called? I think it's called The Flight. You think I'm. Oh, gosh, who did the music? Nicholas Hooper or someone? I don't know. I just. I really, really like the music in this film. Those people on the boat clearly saw what just happened there. Ah yes, number 12, 12, 12 right, you number 12, Cromwell Place. So yeah, another thing in the book is that it's like secret keeper magic is only Dumbledore kind of knows of the existence of it and you can only find out about it if he tells you. So he opened, in the book, he opened up a note written in Dumbledore's handwriting being like, hey, number 12, Cromwell Pulse, Cromwell Place is here. By the minute, we have to act now. Serious. Uncle, Godfather, whatever, and Luke. Henry, Mrs. Weasley, and Molly. Wait, did we see Molly in the fourth at all? I don't think we did, was it? It was just the bit Pete dead. I'm afraid dinner would have to wait. Creature. The only other house elf we ever see. I wanted to write me. Really, we did. Only, only what? Only Dumbledore made us swear not to tell you anything. Their mind is just so... she's so frantic. Dumbledore said. was bad. He's my child, Molly. Extendable ears. He's not James. Harry, he's not your... Crookshanks. That totally looks like a toy. Cat would totally play with it. Voldemort may be after something. Serious? Everyone's like, I can feel tension. Something he If Voldemort's raising an army, then I want to fight. Harry only wants Sirius' approval. But like looking back at it, at a 15 year old, would you really trust them to sort of be, you know, in the order? <laughs> I'm such a Molly. This is how awkward Arthur was standing. Ah, oh, this means train. Underground. Genius, these muggles. 
I've never used the visitors entrance before. Are there before. any of those red telephone boxes fun. still around? In um, London, like I know there are things in cars, but I feel like you have one or two for like novelty purposes. Because yeah, it's such a classic thing, right? Like the telephone box. Like that's why Doctor Who originally the TARDIS is like a blue telephone box because it's like a classic staple of pop culture there. Disciplinary hearing of the 12th of August. It does look very by Harry James formal Potter, resident at number for what four, should be like a small court matter, you know? Surrey. Interrogators Cornelius Osborne Including one that the actual Minister. Prime Minister, Witness. Prime Minister, that the actual Almost Minister for Magic would be there for. Wolfric. Dumbledore's like, woo! I love to make an appearance. Harry's so happy. You, you, his actions. I mean, would there be like a law a where. Yes, it's in front of a muggle, but it's in front of his cousin who's already aware of his magical status. You know? It feels like there should be leeway in that law. For a moment, as though. You were suggesting that the ministry had ordered the attack on this fort. I mean, Umbridge, you know, she's a terrible character, but... Which is why so, so you got to love her. Not really, but she... The actress Melda, she just does it so well. Like, you know, that kind of smiling face, but her voice is like... I hate you. <laughs> Coupled with someone in power makes her, you know, kind of a dangerous person. Stop! To make my job hard. <laughs> I see that gif a lot. Hey, serious. I love how here he's got like, you know, just a robe or a cult thing to cover him. But like in the third, when he was a dog and dragged Ronan, he was still in his prison clothes. I wanted you to have this. Neville's parents. They suffered a fate worse than death, you know. Yeah, and I don't know if they um, explained the whole how Neville could have been the other chosen one because he also met the requirements of the prophecy of the one who was going to defeat Voldemort. I asked this one all the, the things that make his connection to Voldemort a lot stronger since obviously now Voldemort's back in full power. And Harry's, yeah, he's like angry and always feels disconnected from the others in this one. What I tell you? Complete nothing. Just stay away from me! Ooh, how's the first shout? It's only Malfoy. Ron is correct. What do you expect? Mm -hmm. There's Harry's, Harry's on edge. I mean, to be fair, a lot of messed up things have happened to him. Hi, guys. What the heck are you holding? That's a wild cactus. Ah, oh, Thestrals! Here we go. I think I confused the winged horses in the last one for Thestrals. <laughs> this is a Thestral. Luna! You're not going mad. Unless the voice she uses. I can see them too. Because like the Luna, the character is like, you know, kind of not always focused on what's happening and the voice she gave is very high and floaty. help Harry's feeling of disconnect, does it? <gasps> Umbridge is so pink! Let us preserve what must be preserved. Perfect what can be perfected. You know, her facial expression and everything. She does this role so well. It's not the... It's probably the role she's most, you know, remembered for. But, you know, a good villain really does make for a good story. Like, um, Joffrey, everyone hates him, but and the dude played him so well. Everyone goes so quiet. Potter or Plotter. You know someone had fun coming up with those. And about Dumbledore as well. What, and your mum believes them? Well, nobody was there the night Cedric died. <laughs> oh, well, I guess you should read The Prophet then, like your stupid mother. It'll tell you everything you need to know. Oh, Harry. Went harsh, but again, tensions are, tensions are high. Do you believe the... I guess try and tell Harry, like, yo, you're not alone, we got your back. Fine. Because, yeah, the third, the angsty felt kind of funny, but in this it definitely feels more serious. Like, Harry's really proper angry this time. And he does the little snake movements and then the, the music 
the noise that keep connecting him. Again, because he does have that connection with Voldemort, which also leads into Horcruxes. Because much issues as Harry Potter has and, you know, its author. I just, I still really enjoy the series as a whole. You have been told that a certain dark wizard is at large once again. There are times where it is wiser to kind of keep your mouth a shut, lie. but it's Harry... It's not a lie. Yeah. I saw him. I fought Detention! <laughs> your sugar is pink. <laughs> it's... You and I tap it at like maybe one teaspoon of sugar there. But yeah, no, just the character of Umbridge is everything, like how she's all in her pink and she does all these, she wears all these cute kind of outfits and all the pink and all the thing. In contrast to, you know, her personality and what she does, I don't know. And I think Stephen King, or someone said like Umbridge is a really good, you know, villain. I think everyone agrees on that. We all agree that we hate Umbridge. You haven't given me any ink. Oh, you won't need any ink. This uses blood. But yeah, could you imagine how much that hurts? Like, because it's carving it into your skin enough to make a mark that it... Oof. But Harry's like, it's a battle of the wills. It's like, no, just tell someone, man. Literal torture. Oh, yeah. And because yeah, in the fourth one they're taking in all the bits and stuff, stuff. in this one they're introducing Weasley's Wizard, Weasley's Wizard, Weasley's, is that what it's called? And I don't know if they explained it, but Ron and Hermione are prefix in this one, but I don't think they've really said anything about that. Again though, the fifth book was giant. They can only be seen by people who've seen death. Thank you, there's the argument of technically so Harry should have always been able to see him because he technically saw his parents die as an infant, but that she was quite I think the excuse is like he was too young to understand she what had happened. Whereas last year when Cedric died, he had the full understanding of what he'd seen happen. Montage. Defense against the dark art. Like his montage coming in and out of the um, newspaper. I remember I had one teacher in high school. She was very much into proper dress and decorum, like your tie had to be up, your shirt had to be tucked in, or all the buttons buttoned, your hair. The thing that got me is she's always like, no bra strap showing, like it's, it's just a bra strap, you know? It's pretty much just clothes. The bra strap thing always bugged me. You could just lie and say it's a singlet, because then it wouldn't matter. I have to talk to you. Oh, God. Oh, oh Parvati oh. and Padma are crying. Because in the books, they're very close to her. Something you'd like to say, dear? Oh, there are several things I would <laughs> like to say. Not with children around. Combat? What does he think? We're forming some sort of wizard army. Well, that's exactly what he thinks. He's scared the of teenagers. Assembling his own force. That kind of says a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Harry's just glaring at her. Why? Why? Because you know who back your toss <laughs> Kind of defensive from us already. So when you're a second away from being murdered, or watching a friend die right before your eyes. You don't know what that's like. Hmm. Yes, like Hermione says, that's why you're the best one to teach us. Cho couldn't take her eyes off you, could she? I don't know if that was on purpose or not, but there's a different the change in Jimmy's expression just then. Ah, yes, the room of requirement. You know a lot of shady stuff's happened in there. Montage of Dumbledore's army time. I'll go easier. Don't know why Ron would assume he'd do good at this, considering Hermione's literally the top in her class. Come on, Ron. Come on, Ron. Because, yeah, in the book, um, Hermione had jinxed the um, paper that they wrote their name on, so that Cho's friend, when she snitched um, Umbridge about what was going on, like all these pimples on her face sprouted up that spelled out. What did they spell out? freak or something, I don't know, but kind of gave her up as it. But then in this one, I guess because Cho's friend wasn't there and then they needed to give Cho an out. You can kind of see where they combined it to be her, you know? Started out as nothing more than what we are now. Students. If they can do it, why not us? I mean, yes, you also need time in addition to that, but I like the sentiments of what Harry's doing there. He'd make a good teacher. It's my armor. 
Everyone's like, heck yeah, good job, we really did it. Fantastic. That's the best environment to learn in. Lots of support from everybody around and from the teacher. Keep practicing on your own as best you can. Oh, how happy Harry is well here. Done, I'm, I'm doing great, something. Great work. Leaves. No mistletoe. Mistletoe. You guys should kiss then. Well, how was it? Mm, how was your first kiss? Wet. I mean, she was sort of yeah, saliva and also tears. Oh, and then, yeah, we lead right into the other stuff going on. Oh, dear. They definitely could have made that more gory, but then again, still technically in the realm of children, young adult film. <laughs> oh, right. Look at me! Ooh. You all right there? Prepare yourself. He's I think he needs more explanation. He's not even holding his wand. Oh, Daddy's back. Why do they skipped all the same numbers? Nasty breath standing there as bold as The creature. <laughs> He's just muttering at full volume. Oh, creature. The, the world isn't split into good people and death. Mm. Was, we've all got both light and dark inside us. I feel like in the third... There was a lot of good Dumbledore quotes, but this is a really good quote that Sirius says here. The world isn't split into good and bad people. It's not black and white. It's all grey. There's a storm coming, Ari. We'd all best be ready when she does. Mm-hmm. It's plotting something. It's a good lead into this. Hello, Bellatrix. But yeah, I gotta say, you know, they're all about to be captured right now. So this is definitely the first time in all the movies where there's like so many kids and they're all actively doing stuff instead of just sitting in a classroom listening to like a teacher speak. And Harry's like, oh lord, back up. He knows Umbridge is crazy and cannot be trusted. Dornish, Shacklebolt, you will escort Dumbledore. <laughs> yes, Dumbledore's like, <laughs> I'm not going to ask a bit, I've got better things to do. Take it. Bye, Harry. See you soon. Me and Fox are going out down. Ah, and both the twins are like, yeah. We too like to make dramatic entrances and exits. And then everyone's a man at show. Because, yeah, again, that gives her character and therefore her relationship with um, Harry and out. <laughs> Meet my brother. Scrappy. A firm voice always helps. Put me down. Oh, why are you telling me off? Hey, Philosopher's Stone. Feelings. You weren't in there, Snape. <laughs> Get out of my head, sir. You're just like your father. I mean, yeah, Snape should be helping and trying to, you know, keep him calm, but I'm not weak. past grievances. But come on, Snape, you're the adult in this situation. We were bullied by Harry's dad, but there's no reason to take it out on Harry. Snape's like, excuse you, get out of my head, and get out of my classroom. This Harry's like, oh, dad wasn't that great. But the consensus is he got better, even if he was a, you know, jerk. <laughs> Umbridge just showing up in random places. I've always felt our futures lay outside the world of academic achievement. Yeah, no, Fred, time to make a dramatic exit. <laughs> I like the thing, her mind is like furiously writing and runs, either trying to remember something or trying not to fall asleep. Just a teeny one to kick things off, you know. <laughs> I saved the biggest one to go for an And everyone's just laughing. You need to explore all the decrees. Oh, I forgot this pretty much dives right into the, um, the last battle. You know, so far, this has been moving around along quite quickly. I've also just realized that it's like a bit shorter than the other ones, whereas the other ones are like two and a half hours or longer. There's like two hours, 20-ish minutes. Definitely feels I like a good pace. That prophecy. It's 
Voldemort knows exactly how to get to Harry. Get to him through those he loves, especially his only kind of family left. When he could mm -hmm. get into your head. We're all in this together. We're in this together. In the words Vet, of High School Musical. You... Did they mention that she's going to send the Dementors at the beginning? Tell her, Harry! Hermione and her quick thinking. You were trying to trick me. A little bit, yeah. You were about to torture Harry, though. You know. I really hate children. If you feel like that, please don't go into teaching in any way, shape, or form. It's like, who's this little lady? She's so pink and bright. She does actually stand out in that outfit. Bye, Umbridge. See you in the seventh. I think I mentioned the yellow. A lot of the times. He's doing it so alone. How are we going to get along? The final battle. Can and I this one's the one they're actively like, we're coming with. See, this one I can excuse, unlike the first one, the broom sets, because it's, you know, dark and stormy and they're up in the air instead of flying next to a boat. You know, watching this and then remembering everything that happened in the book, there was a lot. And I do think this movie did a good job of cutting it down to what just what it needs to be. 96. 95. Where is Sirius? We don't hear the full prophecy in this, I don't think, eh? Because it also starts with, like, born as the seven month dies, born to those who have thrice defied him, and that's the part that could um, relate to both Harry and Neville. But yeah, Voldemort went after Harry, mark him as his equal. But yes, neither can live while the other survives, so one of you's got to kill the other in the end. Bellatrix does the crazy look very well. The Harry's like, well shoot, I gotta protect my friends. Got us into this, I gotta get us out. And Jenny hits him with her favourite spell. Oops, everything's falling down. We should probably go. Bonk. Nice of that room to catch them before they fall. Separate them all and use them as bit and bait, kind of. Oh hey! Get away from my guts. Why not get physical, right? Here comes everybody. Oops. Yes, yeah, so they're all white and the others are black, so you can color code me. Alright, time to fight. Heck yeah. Oh yeah. Nice one, James. He's like, he thinks of me as my dad. We all heard that spell. And Lupin's like, he knows what the instinct is to jump into the thing after him, so he has to hold him back. But I think I heard that, um, like on the day they filmed that, he got the news that someone in his family had passed away, so he was able to channel that into, like, pain. And get Harry up the way, and Bella's just like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I like how they did the, their battle in this, just the way it looks with the lights and stuff. Because Dumbledore's red, red versus green. Because he's he's always, because yeah, green is to kill, Voldemort's always fighting to kill. And then Dumbledore's just doing it to like, um, stupefy basically, you know, to hold him, not to kill him. It's a lot of glass. Some dust. Ugh. Fine. Plan B. <laughs> See, possession of another human being. I don't think we've done that. I mean, technically, I guess Professor Quirrell. But the fact that he, he like, possesses Harry. I don't think he does anything like that again. Oh, yes, the similarities between the movies of pain and suffering and anger and stuff. Those emotions have a strong hold, but it's like, there's, there's, there's good there still too. It isn't how you are like. It's how you're different. It's how you are not. It's the actions that he chose, like why he wasn't in Slytherin. He's not on his own. He's got his support system. Yeah. He's got all loved. He's loved. I'm getting teary. <laughs> oh, I got emotional there for a second, excuse me. <laughs> Hello, 
something else coming, they're like, oh my god, Voldemort. <laughs> we totally believed him all along, oh my gosh. You know, like, they've never done this newspaper stuff before, but it's a nice way to sort of exposition your way through what's happening. I don't know if they do it in the movies, but in the book, after all this, they give him like a full explanation of what happened the night his mum died. Because Dumbledore's finally like, well, you need to hear it now, I guess. You know, in the book, like, he's just super mad, but here he just sounds defeated and sad. It's my fault. Something worth fighting for. Mm hmm. Maybe that's something worth fighting for. Like, this one feels like Spider Villain Happened, it definitely ends kind of more positively, whereas the fourth, definitely a downer. But, like, you need this little. After being so, you know, angry about everything through the fifth, you needed this bit of positivity at the end. Gosh, I really did love re-watching that. I love this movie so much. I, I, I didn't get bored once throughout it. Maybe it's also because of the length, like it's just two hours, because the rest is now just credits in comparison to the others where it's two and a half hours. Yeah, I mean, so much stuff happens, you know, you get introduced to Luna Lovegood, Umbridge, again, great villain, big moments happen, Sirius Black's death, you can feel things are getting more serious, the fact that um, now the kids, you know, Harry and all of them are actually doing more and kind of being a more active part instead of stuff just happening to them, I'm getting more emotionally invested, I definitely teared up <laughs> during the, um, that was seeing where Harry's obsessed and he's thinking about how, you know, his friends, you know, they all love him, he's got love in his life, he's got something worth fighting for, and then obviously when Sirius died. There's just a lot of things happening and um, I don't know when I'll be doing the next one of Half-Blood Prince and then Deathly Hallows Part 1 and Part 2 because again I just kind of jump back and forth on the movies I'm watching. But if you've made it this far, thanks for watching. And yeah, I will see you in the next video.